there's a lot of amazing shit for us to talk about. And, you know, one of the new things that you've, uh, you've gotten into is called the Consilience Project. And it's just a really beautiful, you know, group of people. And I'll let you describe, you know, the people you've brought together, what you're trying to do and the, and the problems you're trying to solve with this project. And then we'll, uh, we'll get into the, the details of some of the things that you're pointing to. Yeah, so start with just a brief overview of the Consilience Project. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I will just clarify. It's not people I've brought together. It's kind of group of people who had known each other, worked in related spaces, and self-assembled into this thing. Uh, it's actually an important distinction. Um, come back to that more. But uh, yeah, some of the people who's uh, thinking about world problems, I have learned the most from respect the most, uh, and have a, a depth of actual care and commitment in addition to very nuanced understanding. Um, maybe the easiest way to talk about it to begin with is we can look at the history of our social institutions and social coordination systems before we had formalized ideas of markets, global markets, say before Scottish enlightenment, and we go back, you know, feudalism before nation states, uh, back to tribal cultures, early empires, changes in the social systems by which lots of humans can coordinate effectively towards shared purposes, humans who understand the world differently and want different things. Those social systems had to make major evolutionary leaps as the underlying tooling basis, the techno-industrial basis of the societies did because it changed the nature of the types of things that people were doing, how many of them could coordinate the division of labor and specialization and the types of issues they had and like that. So you'd see step functions and tooling, and then you'd see correspondingly breakdown of the previous societies that couldn't handle those issues and the new step functions and the social capacities. And obviously that had to also mean step functions in the nature of education. How do we develop the people who can understand the whole knowledge base that is needed to run the civilization? Because obviously in, you know, a hundred years ago, we didn't have to develop people that could run a internet. And now you and I are speaking mediated at the speed of light mediated by satellites. There's a lot of human knowledge that is needed to keep that system that we all depend upon running. So education to be able to advance that civilizational knowledge has to evolve to do that thing. <clears throat> if we look at the current problems that face the world, we look at the fact that we had a movement from broadcast media where a few people could broadcast a message and everyone else would get a relatively consistent message from the printing press on through radio and television to with the internet, this kind of decentralized, everybody can broadcast, and then a complete explosion of more content than anybody can take in. And then how does someone find the result that they're looking for when there's a billion search results for anything? So you get these major platforms that based on network dynamics end up being people's main interface with the totality of the internet that is curating content specific to them. This is Facebook, YouTube, Google. And so of course people get customized worldviews that have nothing in common, like a person in a red state and a person in a blue state, their newsfeed on Facebook might have not a single thing in common. And yet they don't realize that the world that they're getting exposed to is not actually the world. <laughs> it is mm -hmm. just a little fragment of it. And of course, since Facebook ha is a company and it is making money by selling this person's attention through advertising, it wants to optimize people's time on site. It optimizes their time on site by having them spend as much time as possible through attention hijacking. And that happens if I stay in a very conscious, self-aware place, I'll realize I don't want to spend that much time on Facebook and get the fuck off and do something else. So the degree to which I get, of course, distracted, engaged, limbically hijacked by fear, desire, in-group, out-group type dynamics, I'm going to spend more time. So the AI that optimizes that newsfeed automatically ends up driving individual bias like confirming people's bias because people spend more time when their bias is getting confirmed than when they're being exposed to new stuff that disorients them and uh, in group out group type of identity. So we get more outrage, more kind of limbic hijack, more bias confirmation. How do you run a democracy with that? No, those are new issues. Nobody ever faced those issues of a fra completely fragmenting worldview mediated by a technological infrastructure of that type that has more people than China and the U S combined. 
Yeah. No previous people had to deal with the issue of weaponized drones that could take out infrastructure targets that anybody could make on their own at home, or actually arms race on weaponized AI, or hitting planetary boundaries regarding species extinction and uh, dead zones and oceans and climate change and a million other things. So when you look at how badly we're doing at solving those issues, the fact that none of the sustainable development goals have been met, the fact that we can't do nuclear disarmament, despite how important it is. In fact, we get more countries that have nukes rather than less, and we get new arms races. Every time there's a new technology, you get a kind of inexorable arms race on it. We can't solve the tragedy of the commons issues. And the issues are moving closer to catastrophic risk, eminent catastrophic risk. And it's like, okay, maybe our problems are such that we need new problem solving mechanisms. And it kind of makes sense that the founding fathers as smart as they were when they were coming up with a social coordination system for the US at the time, they didn't have these problems, right? They, they, when they were thinking of the second amendment, they weren't thinking of thermite weaponized drones. Like it's just a different thing in terms of um, catastrophe level weapons that individuals, non-state actors can have. Like what, what do you do with that? Um, and they weren't thinking of a satellite-based IoT surveillance state. And what, how do you deal with that kind of thing? So there, So if you just try to apply that system, you'll find as brilliant as it was and adequate at the time, it also categorically fails. And the same is true when the Scottish Enlightenment was doing theory of markets. They didn't have these issues to deal with. When when, mm. So the biggest company possible, the asymmetry between that and the individual was nothing like the asymmetry it is now. And and limits of growth planetarily weren't a thing. And uh, a financial services sector that was running on AI high-speed trading wasn't a thing. And um, the same with like Marx's critique of that didn't have to deal with this. And even the Bretton Woods world that says, oh shit, we have to deal with the bomb. That's a new thing. And so we can never have war again between the major countries. The Bretton Woods world right after World War II didn't have to deal with these complex of issues. And so fundamentally what Um, you know, we were kind of recognizing in this is that the problem scape of the world currently has to be addressed for life to be able to continue because the risks are actually catastrophic and increasing in number and probability as time goes on. And they are not being adequately solved through the types of approaches through either business or individual governments or IGOs or nonprofits. They're just, they're not being solved adequately through those processes. And for the most part, our problem solving processes either don't solve the problems or they solve a narrow problem and externalize harm somewhere else in the process. And so the major problem that needs solved is that our problem solving processes are inadequate to the problems we face. So what are the new problem solving processes? What are the new coordination processes that civilization needs to have to be safe stewards of the level of power that full globalization and exponential tech gives us. Um, And so, you know, when you think about like the Scottish Enlightenment was good thinking on this idea of theory of markets and that thinking ended up becoming the basis of new social systems. Uh, Marxist thinking became the basis of new social systems, the Federalist Papers and the kind of thinking that uh, of on social issues in the early formation of the American democracy gave rise to a social system. We're working on an analysis of the problems that the world faces that is deep enough and detailed enough, both in how the problems interconnect, why they haven't been able to be successfully solved and what's generating them, that it gives insight into what adequate problem solving processes would look like as the next phase of kind of social organization. And that if we don't want that social organization to be imposed. Some people get it and now are going to impose by force this more enlightened thing on everybody, which is itself a fail case, right? The impositional government, we would say, is, is a fail case of a different kind. Then the, it, it has to be commensurate with the ideas of an open society, even though it would be a more advanced type of open society, meaning that the government derives its power from the, con, or the governance process derives its power from the consent of the governed, right? That the people are actually the, as Franklin said, the the depository of the power. Well, that means the people have to understand the issues well enough and want these new problem solving mechanisms and be capable of participating with it. Well, that is a kind of cultural enlightenment that requires people developing a lot of capacities to make sense of the world and to have high quality conversations with others and to have effective problem solving, which requires a change in value that would even have them invest in that. 
mm-hmm. and then the development of new capacity. So what is a mo- what is the necessary current kind of cultural enlightenment that could give rise to new problem solving processes and institutions that could solve the problem space that we're facing now and usher us into a high tech digital global world that works and doesn't drive catastrophic risk. Those are the things that we're exploring and trying to help advance in this project.